Hello everybody. Welcome to the second video on the basics of HTML. In this video, we will begin learning new HTML elements as well as the structure of an HTML element. We will also start building the project that we will work on over the duration of the entire Introduction to Web Development course. The project is to create a website for your favorite musician or band. I will walk you through the exact steps needed to create the website, and I will explain all the concepts along the way. As you follow along with this course, I want you to choose your favorite musician or band and create the website for them, instead of copying exactly what I do. In this video, we will be creating the HTML for the About page of the band website. You may notice that it looks ugly now, but remember that HTML is only for the content of the site. Later, we will use CSS to style the page. Let's get started by going over the structure of an HTML element. Most HTML elements are composed of a start tag, an end tag, and some content between these tags. The content inside these tags can either be text or other HTML elements. There are some tags, however, that have no content and thus have no end tag. These are called empty elements. The image tag is an example of an empty element. As you may notice, the image tag has an attribute called source. All HTML elements can have attributes set on them to define certain characteristics of the element, such as the source for an image tag. And that is all there is to an HTML element. We will now jump into the actual coding of the About page for the website and learn about many different types of HTML elements. Hello everybody! Welcome to the coding section of this video. As you can see on the left side of my screen, I have Visual Studio Code open with the HTML from the previous video. I also have an Images folder containing all of the images that were going to be used to create the About page of this website. On the right of my screen, you can see the final version of the About page created for a band called The Generics. For you, this band will be completely different but you should be able to follow the same template that I am using on this right side. In order to get started creating this band page, let's first right click on our about page and click open with live server. This will allow us to see our changes live as we make them. Now let's go back to the final band page and take a look at the different components of the page. The first thing you may notice is that at the top of the page we have a header. This header contains a navigation with three links going to the home page, the store page, and the about page, as well as a title for the band the generics. There's also a line in between the two separating them. Let me paste in some code that will render this for us. Now let me open this code in the browser. As you can see, we have our navigation links at the top of the page, our title at the bottom, and a horizontal line separating them. And let me explain how this works. First, all of our content is wrapped with this header tag. This header tag is just a way of telling the browser that this is a header element. It doesn't apply any styling to these elements, it just says this block of code is the header for our page. The next element inside of our page is the nav element. This is very similar to the header element in that it doesn't apply any styling, but it tells the browser that this is the navigation section of our web page. You could have multiple navs throughout your page, but most likely you're going to just have one nav either in the top of your page or on the side of your page. Next, we have the UL element. This stands for unordered list. There are two types of lists that you can create in HTML, an OL, which is an ordered list, and a UL, which is an unordered list. In our case, we are using an unordered list, or a UL, because the elements in our list have no particular order to them. Next, we have three LI elements. LI elements stand for list item and can only be used inside of a UL or an OL. These denote the actual items of your list, and as you can see on the right, are styled with a bullet point when they're inside of an unordered list, and they are styled with numbers when they're inside of an ordered list. Next, we have an HR element. This element, as you can see, has no closing tag, which means it is an empty element. This HR element supplies us this horizontal line in our page, and stands for horizontal rule. Lastly we have an h1 element. The h1 element is a heading element, and there's six different sizes of, h of heading elements. There's the h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, and h6. Each one is progressively smaller than the last one, with the h1 being the largest and the h6 being the smallest. Now let's go back to our final version of the web page and look at the next section of code that we have. This is the about section. At the top, you can see that we have a header element, which is called about, a grouping of text with an image, and another group of text. 
Let me paste over some code that will define this section and view this in the browser. As you can see, we have that about heading, a grouping of text, our image, and another grouping of text. On the left here, we can view the actual code and break it down. The first thing you'll notice is that we have a section element that wraps all of the other code in this section. The section element is very similar to a header element in that it implies this is a grouping of stuff that is all inside of one section. While the header element says this is the header of our page, the section element says this is just a generic section of some form in which all of the content is related. Next, we have an h2 element for the about header. This is very similar to our h1 header, except for that an h2 header is always going to be smaller than an h1 header because h1 is the largest header, h6 is the smallest as you remember, so h2 is just one step below an h1. And as you can see on the right here, our h1 for the generics is larger than our h2 for about. Next, we have a p element, also known as a paragraph element. A paragraph element defines a grouping of text that is usually long form paragraph form text with many sentences, and it is much smaller font than our headings. Next, we have an image tag. The image tag, as you can see, is an empty element and has no end tag. It also has this source attribute that we talked about earlier. The source attribute defines the path to the image to be displayed on the page in relation to the actual page you're on. So as you can see, we are in this about.html page, and in the images folder, we have an image called bandmembers.png. So in order to get this image, we go into the images folder, and then get the image bandmembers.png. This must be a path related to the about.html file. So if we moved this about.html file into our images folder, for example, then this path would have to be bandmembers.png as opposed to images slash bandmembers.png. And if we reopen this in live server, you'll see that this now works. Let's move that back to where it was though. And then make this images slash bandmembers.png and open it in live server again. And there we go, the image works now. And lastly, we have another paragraph element with another section of text. Now let's go back to our final page and look at the last element that we have, the footer element. As you can see in the footer, we have the generics heading as well as a YouTube image, a Spotify image, and a Facebook image. Let me paste over some code that will define this in HTML and view this in the browser. As you can see, we have that heading as well as our three images. If we go over and look at the actual HTML code, you'll notice that almost all of the elements are something that we've already used before. The footer element just like the header and section element, defines a grouping of text and HTML that is going to be in the footer of the page, which is almost always going to be at the very bottom of your page. We then have our H3 element, which just like the H2 and H1, is a large text heading for the page, and it is going to be smaller than the H2 element. We then have another unordered list with three list items in it, and each one has an image which links to the Facebook logo, Spotify logo, and YouTube logo in our images folder. And that's all there is to creating the HTML for this about page. As you may notice, our actual final page looks very different than what our current page looks like, but that is because this final page is styled using CSS. As you remember from earlier videos, HTML is only used to define the content of the page, and this right here is all of the content that goes onto our page. The styling for the fonts, font size, background colors, and all these images, that'll all come later in CSS. All of the content though, the HTML, is complete for this about page. Some common problems that you may run into as you create the HTML for your own band about page is that you forget to include the ending tag for your HTML elements. If you do this, your HTML will not look correct or it may not even render at all. In order to check that you have created all of the ending tags for your HTML elements, if you click on either the start tag or the end tag, Visual Studio Code will automatically highlight the ending tag for you, or the start tag if you would selected the ending tag. This is an easy way to check if you have actually created the ending tags and starting tags for all of your elements. Another common problem is with your images not displaying. In order to get around this problem, make sure that the path for your image is in relation to your actual HTML page that it is on. 
For example, our about page is in the same folder as the images folder, so we must first navigate through the images folder to get to the images inside of it. If you run into any other problems while creating the HTML for this page, let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know which musician or band you decided to use for this project. All of the code for this project is available on my GitHub account, which is linked in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Thank you very much for watching.